Weeks before hurricanes Helene and Milton ravaged our beaches, 10 Tampa Bay started looking into the results of a new study. An experiment that could suggest there's an effective and less expensive way to harden our coastline against erosion by sending electricity through the sand. 10 Tampa Bay's Eric Glasser takes a look at that process and how scientists say they got the idea from watching animals that do the same thing naturally. Sand by nature is soft and grainy, but run an electrical charge through it, and it's possible, say scientists, to create a hardened crust, making coastlines far less susceptible to erosion from waves, wind, and tides. Is electro deposition. Professor Alessandro Rodolaria leads a team at Northwestern University that mimicked a natural process used by clams, mussels, and other organisms to turn seawater and sand into shells and skeletons. But instead of using metabolic energy, scientists used a mild electric current and got the same results. By basically passing uh, an electric current through seawater, we can convert these, these, these salt minerals into solid forms. Rotolaria figures it would take about a month to harden Bay Area beaches. He envisions using long strings or a mesh filled with electrodes, which can be inserted into the sand at a chosen depth. Then flip the switch. To basically trigger these mineral precipitations and cement the ground in such a way that basically we could form a crust um, of, of, of solid material that would be more resistant to erosion. The idea has challenges in a region like ours. Tourists, for example, would almost certainly prefer a softer surface, but given our recent storm, some might consider a comfort compromise. I could see that there's benefits from doing that, uh, especially with all the hurricane damage and stuff like that too. I understand. So I do see the pros and cons. I'm just telling you what I prefer and I like, I like the sand the way it is. Environmental interests say any process that would lithify or harden the beach is also unlikely to get approval from state regulators, since it would make it tougher on plants and animals that need softer sand, like nesting turtles. Anything that was to lithify or sort of glue the sand together wouldn't be a good fit on our beaches because of the turtle habitat and the recreational nature. Yeah, the destruction is horrible. I do feel really bad for people whose homes were destructed and businesses that were taken over. But the turtles and the, the you know, what lives underneath their crabs, you know, anything that lives in the sand, that's their home. Rota Luria says the process might not suit every region, but it can be adjusted. For example, creating a crust several feet below the surface to reduce erosion while maintaining a top layer of softer sand. There would still be the loss of, of some sand at the surface, very likely, but at least we could lose only a given fraction. It's a resiliency option scientists hope to move quickly out of the laboratory and into the field. We are not there yet with the technology, but I hope that within two years at the latest, we will be ready. The scientists behind this study say it's projected that nearly 26% of the world's beaches will be washed away by the end of the century. They hope if they can get private companies on board and get government agencies to pay attention, this might offer a more affordable, more natural option to protecting our vanishing coastlines. On Clearwater Beach, Eric Glasser, 10 Tampa Bay. And scientists say the cost of electro uh, deposition is also about the same as using cement or grout to stabilize the sand. They claim that their method is reversible and can be easily undone.